Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen I want to show you how I like to make my uh, profiteroles which are really not that different from cream puffs but they're like you know a pot of shoe pastry that is then filled with really sort of dense sweet whipped cream and then just doused in a bittersweet chocolate sauce. They are so good. My aunt makes them the best when we go to Italy. She actually has them ready for us um, when we arrive after we eat lunch. That's our, that's our dessert usually. But um, So I want to share this recipe with you because they're on my mind. <laughs> and when they're on my mind, they got to go in the belly. And since I'm going to get them in my belly, I want to share the recipe with you before anyone asks for it on social media because you know I'm going to be posting a photo of these because they're so good and so easy. Let me run you through. Oven's preheated to, three, to 425. The list of ingredients for the dough is very simple. You just need water, flour and salt, eggs and butter. That's all you're gonna need to make the actual um, pastry portion of the whole, of the shebang. In a saucepan, I'm going to add some water and the butter. And I'm going to cook this just long enough for the mixture to come to a boil and for the butter to fully melt. That is perfect. So now I'm just going to turn the heat on as low as it goes. I'm going to add the flour and the salt. And then you're just going to start stirring this with your wooden spoon. And as you can see, it kind of starts coming together. And you want to cook this over low heat for about a minute or two or until you no longer see any raw bits of flour. And this just kind of gives it a chance to all come together. That looks good enough. I'm going to add this to my bowl. Now, I'm not making a huge batch. I'm only making about 16 profiteroles. So if you were doing a big batch, I would suggest you use your standing mixer, fit it with a paddle attachment. But I'm going to just do this with my handheld electric whisk because it works just fine. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just turn this on and mix this for about a minute or so because the mixture is so hot, if I were to add the eggs directly into this right now without giving it a chance to cool off a little bit, there's a risk that you could scramble the eggs. So just let it go. It basically, as it moves, it just allows the, the dough to cool down just a little bit. That's great. So now I'm going to add one egg at a time. And then it looks like it's never going to come together, but it will. You just have to make sure that you whisk really well before you add your other egg. And then you just want to, once you add your final egg, then you just want to continue to make until it all comes together. That's what it should look like. Really sticky. Perfect. Okay, so now traditionally you use a pastry bag fitted with a round tip and you pipe them out, which I think makes things a little bit complicated because then you worry whether or not one's bigger than the other. So I just go back to my handy dandy ice cream scoop because it works really well for me every time. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But here's what I found helpful though, is if you take a little vegetable oil and you just kind of very, very small amount, just pop that in there, it allows them to come out much easier. See that? And you want to place them just a few inches apart on your prepared baking sheet. Last one. All right, so I managed to get about 14 out of my batch of dough. I shoot for about 16 or so. If they're any bigger, which you can make them about that big if you want to, then instead of baking them at 425 for 20 minutes or so, you'd want to bake them at 400 for about 35 minutes or so. Um, so it's up to you. But I think this is the perfect size because they're a perfect, like, just the, the perfect size, just trust me on that. I'm gonna pop these in and I'll show you what they look like when they are fully baked and then you want to let them cool completely. Alrighty, my cream puffs baked to perfection. Now, a really good tip when your cream puffs come out of the oven, because you always want your cream puffs to be hollow on the inside. You don't want them to be gummy or anything like that because then you have that eggy taste. So what you do is as soon as it comes out of the oven, you take a little paring knife, right? And you just kind of make a little slit Okay, and that allows the steam to escape. That way your cream puffs don't get all soggy and mushy on the inside. All right, so to make the filling and the topping is really easy. We're gonna start with the topping first. What I have here is some bittersweet chocolate chips and some heavy cream that I warmed up in the microwave. You want your heavy cream to be really nice and hot for this. Otherwise, it will not melt the chocolate chips. And now you can do this with semi-sweet or even milk chocolate if you want to, but traditionally, you have to do it with bittersweet chocolate because that's just what I'm used to. <laughs> so I'm going to share that with you because I think that makes a difference. 
to make the filling, you need a really a beautiful, lightly sweetened, heavy whipped cream. Now what I have here is some heavy whipping cream. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start whisking this with my handheld electric whisk until it starts to develop a little bit of a soft peak. All right, at this point, I'm gonna add my confectioner's sugar and I'm gonna continue to whisk until my cream has gotten really lovely and thick, not so thick that it resembles butter, but just right underneath that. All right, that is perfect. That's exactly what you're looking for. But before we move any further to that, I just need to whisk my chocolate and cream mixture because it's been sitting for a while. So I'm just gonna give this a whisk until all the chocolate has melted. Now I'm just placing my heavy whipped cream into a large resealable plastic bag that I just have fitted with a star tip on one corner because mama never remembers to buy actual piping bags, <laughs> which is fine because this works just as well. Just get it all in the corner like that. And then you just, if you need to, for a little guidance, you can just cut a little, a little bit like that, right? You really want to stuff these babies full of sweet, heavy cream, like that. And just keep going until they're all nice and full. Just trying to get all that cream down there. Once you have them all stuffed, this is what you do. You have to pretty much dunk the entire thing in there. So I start with the bottom, right? And then work my way up. And it's okay if a few of the you know, parts don't get covered because as you continue to put these on your plate, then they'll cover themselves. So just continue to do that. And you can do this, you can put these in a single layer. You can uh, put them on top of each other like I like to do because that's just what I'm used to because they all stick together when they go into the fridge. It's pretty much amazing, pretty much phenomenal. So that's what I'm gonna continue to do. And then I'll show you what they look like when they're done. And I can't wait to send a picture of these to my aunt tonight, you have no idea. Last one, just right on top. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop these into the fridge for about an hour or so. I just want that chocolate to set and for everything to kind of get cold. And then I'm gonna do one final thing to them before I serve them because it's just not the same without it. And there's the final touch, this is what you do. In every little cranny, in every little spot, in every little corner, you pipe some more of the whipped cream. So it is just magnificent. And there is no way to eat this in any clean way. Your fingers are gonna get messy. It's just the best. I don't even know which one to get because they look so, well, I want that one. Because they look so good. Oh, it's gonna get stucky and messy. Yes, like that. I and mean, there's just no other way to do it, but you just get your hands in there and go to town. Mmm. I throw my towel in that one. Uh huh. Perfect. Mmm. So fat. So creamy, but yeah, light because it's not really sweet. Bittersweet chocolate. It's perfect. Whipped cream. Perfectly dense. That is amazing. If you wanna keep things a little bit neater, you can make them in one single layer. But really, this is how we do them, so that's how I'm gonna share them with you. Go get the recipe at lauraandthekitchen.com, and I will see you next time.